Okay, so what I want to look at in this lesson is this idea of what's called electronic configuration of atoms. So all that basically means is that it's how are electrons configured or how do they hang out in relation to outside the nucleus of an atom. So if we have a look here at this, um, so what we have is we have a nucleus the nucleus of the atom and if we remember the nucleus of the atom is just made up of protons and neutrons that are compact together in this tight space that's called the nucleus of the atom and that's in the middle and then outside the atom there's these regions of space where the electrons hang out so when we talk about electronic configuration of atoms we're interested in trying to understand or visualize in our mind or write down on a piece of paper um, what way these electrons hang out for each of the individual elements that make up the periodic table. So that's what we're interested in looking at. Looking at. Now, if we remember then, so this is the nucleus. As we move out away from the nucleus, we have these areas of space, which, we, which are known as um, specific energy levels. So we have n is equal to one, right the way up to n is equal to five. So you can think about these as they're basically distances that are specific distances away from the nucleus of the atom. And as we move out further and further away from the nucleus of the atom, each of these energy levels have a specific energy value associated with them. So what does that mean? It means that like when you have electrons that are in this first energy level here, they will have a very specific amount of energy. Um, if you want to move those electrons up into the next energy, second energy level, you have to give them an exact amount of energy that is equal to the distance between this first energy level and the next energy level in order to excite the electron. So each energy level has an associated value with it. And then we kind of talked about how when electrons in atoms become excited, they actually they move up to a higher energy level and then they fall back down to their original starting energy level. And when they do that, they, they give out a specific amount of energy. And that energy, that specific amount of energy can be linked to a particular color or wavelength or amount of energy uh, that can be given out or emitted by um, the atom. So, so that's and that's the whole basis of light, for example, why we see things. The reason we see things around us is because the atoms in the objects that are all around us, they, their electrons, they absorb the light from the sun or from, you know, or from a human source, like a flashlight. And what happens is the electrons absorb that energy, they get excited, they move up into a higher energy level, fall back down, and then they give off uh, specific wavelengths of light that our eye is able to see and perceive. So, but, but really what we want to do is we will kind of, with this lesson, we want, we want to kind of look at like how are these electrons arranged within the atom. And what we can do then is we started to look at these ideas of what are known as orbitals. So we have, for example, and these orbitals have specific shapes. So for example, this is the, these are S orbitals, these are P orbitals, and then these ones here are D orbitals. So what that so so what we want to do now is we want to kind of bring these ideas and then introduce them to kind of look at this in a little bit more detail. So an energy so I want to introduce this idea of energy sublevels. So these are when we look at this here, what we're talking about are very distinct levels. Okay, and these levels are let's say regions of space outside the nucleus. But these levels then can be actually further broken down into what are known as sublevels, and we can look at this here. And it'll, it's kind of we're taking this image here, and we're just we're, we're slightly changing it. So an energy sublevel is a subdivision of an energy level containing one or more atomic orbitals, all of which have the same energy. So what when we when we say that, so what we can say here is. So we see here, so we have the first energy level, n is equal to one. So that's this region here. Now, if we were to look at it in a different way, so we're just, this is the nucleus, and then this is the first energy level here. And this energy level, we can call it n is equal to one. And the one part 
is represented in this. So you have this one, this, so yeah, see the way we have here, we have a one and then we have an S and then we have a dash. So this one represents, indicates that it's the first energy level out from the nucleus. So it's the N is equal to one level. And it, this S here represents that it has a particular um, atomic orbital that has this particular shape here. So it's like a region of space. So this, what does this region of space where an electron can hang out look like? It looks like this. So, and it's an S orbital. Now, this orbital here, this S, this S orbital, um, it can actually, this first level, it has a capacity we can see here. It can hold two electrons. So this capacity that we're talking about here is how many electrons this energy level can hold. So we can see here. So essentially you can have two electrons moving around in this region of a nucleus and they're kind of moving around in a region of space that kind of looks like this. Or another way to kind of think about it is it kind of arranges itself in this kind of arrangement in a spherical type shape. Now as we move up then we can see or as we move out should I say from the nucleus so this is the first energy level it has it has an s orbital that looks like this shape and it can hold up to two electrons. So a way that you can represent this is in this we can put in like like this. So, so we have something like this, this is what it looks like. So what this indicates, each of these lines indicates, represents what's known as an electron. And the way that we have them, so we have one up, one down, what that means is that represents the way that they spin. So electrons, if you think about them as little balls of energy, and they not only do they, let's say, move around within this space, but they also as well themselves rotate. So one, for example, has spins up and one spins down, and that's what this represents here. So we can just, this here indicates that this orbital here has two electrons in it and it's full. So then when we move out to the next energy level, n is equal to two. So we can see there n is equal to two. So again, in this energy level, we have two sub, we have, we have these sub levels. So first of all, we have this second, so the two represents this, it, that it's the second energy level out from the, the nucleus from the nucleus of the atom. But within this then we have two different types of orbitals. So we have this S orbital, which will be kind of shaped like this, a region of space. And this S orbital can hold another two electrons. So you can kind of put in two electrons like this. And then also then as well, we have uh, these P orbitals. And P orbitals are kind of shaped like this. And each of these P orbitals, so imagine you can have one electron here, one electron here, each of these, each dash here represents one of these p orbitals. So you're going to have one in this axis, one in the up and down axis, and then one in this left and right axis, like this back and out into the page. So each of these levels then, each of these, so these here would, are considered what are known as these um, energy sublevels. So you have the overall energy level here is n is equal to two. Okay, so it's kind of coming from is this this second distance out from the nucleus. So this would be the main energy level, but it's split up into two what are known as sublevels. So you can see these two sublevels here. And each of these p p orbitals or p sublevels, they can hold two electrons. So we can kind of put them in like this. Then when we move out, let's say to the next energy level n is equal to 3, the third energy level. So see, again, we start off, we have an s orbital that would look like that. We have the three p orbitals, okay? And then we have this, what's known as a 3, 3d. So there are these d orbitals. And there's, there's always going to be one, two, three, four, five of these. And they will be kind of arranged like this, this kind of a shape here. So this is the d orbital. So again, what you can say is that all of these here, these are what are known as n is equal to three. So if you like, these all happen in this region here outside the nucleus. Um, 
Now, what you'll notice here, if we look, so as so this is the nucleus. As we move out from the nucleus, we can see here that the energy value increases. So, for example, the electrons that are in this this first the 1s orbital, they're gonna not they're not gonna have as much energy as the electrons within these orbitals here. And then also then even within these, so let's say if we take the second energy level, the electrons in the second energy level will have more energy than the electrons in the first energy level. But then even within these here, you have, so for example, the electrons that are in the in these 3p orbitals will have less energy, will have more energy, slightly more energy than the electrons that are here. But what we're saying is that these 3p orbitals, they will all have the same each of these electrons that are within this p orbital they'll all have the same the same energy value so remember it's important to kind of think about these energy levels as well as we're looking at this so you can see the first energy level can hold two electrons the second energy the second energy level okay and that so this will be this first one is n is equal to one the second one n is equal to two and you can see here that we can have we can have six electrons. So you're going to have two electrons in this level, and then you're going to have six in here, like so. So you have six electrons. So you have six electrons here. Sorry, this is the second energy level. So the second energy level can can have up to. So you have eight electrons in total. So you have the two that are here, one, two, and then you have the six that are here. So that's eight in total when you add these up. Add these two and that's equal to eight. And then we can see if we go into the third energy level, so this is this third level out here, it, it can hold up to, so you can see here, so it can, it has, it has, so this is the, this is the third energy level. So it, it can hold two electrons in here the p orbitals can hold six electrons and then this d orbit these d orbitals there's five d orbitals and this is what they look like and each orbital can hold two electrons which means that this this whole d these d suborbitals can hold up the, can hold 10 electrons like you can see here so you're going to have 10 all the way across here like so And then if we move up further then into the, so you have these, so then you have the fourth level up and you can see you have two, two electrons can go in here, you can have six in here and you can have a uh, 10 in here. So this actually should go to here, so like saying. So this can have this can have up to, um. So between here, here, and here, you can have up. You can have two in here, six in here, and ten in here, which gives us a total of eighteen. Two, six, and ten, which is eighteen. And then this pattern then continues. The you can go up into the fourth energy level, which is out here, and sorry should I say the fifth energy level and it's going to have an s orbital and p orbitals as well so this is so an energy sublevel is a subdivision of an energy level containing one or more atomic orbitals all of which have the same energy value as well so what happens is the electrons are occupy these energy levels and they occupy them in the in this kind of arrangement as well they start to fill up so this just gives you like these are the kind of shapes of these s orbitals the p orbitals look like this and the d orbitals look like that and as you can see here s orbitals can hold up to two electrons so you can see you have this first energy level has one s orbital this second energy level has an s orbital and it has three p orbitals so it has three of these and it can hold up to as you can see here each level and orbital can hold a certain capacity of electrons so there are a couple of principles then that we need to take into account let's say when we are figuring out what the arrangement of the of electrons are um, for particular elements and these are these principles here so 
what, we, what, what I might do is I might just look at a particular example. So if we have a look here, so hydrogen, for example, hydrogen is the first atom on the element on the periodic table, and it has one proton and it has one electron. So if we, if we were to take hydrogen then, so what would that look like? So hydrogen has one electron. So how would, what, what way would the electrons be distributed in, in a typical hydrogen atom? So these principles here, so the Albifor principle, which states that electrons will occupy the lowest energy level, lowest energy sublevel available. So imagine this is, so imagine I have an atom of hydrogen. And then it has, it just has, so its atomic number is one, so that means it has one electron. So where does that electron hang out? Will it hang out up here? Okay, this far away from the nucleus, or will it hang out down here? Well, what happens is the electrons will occupy the lowest energy levels first, so it'll hang out down here, like so. So the arrangements of the electrons, let's say in a hydrogen atom would look like this. You have the nucleus, you have this first energy level, and in an S orbital, you just have one electron that's hanging out here within this space. Now, what you can actually do is you can write this down. You can write down what the electronic structure. So the electronic structure for hydrogen, it looks something like this. So you'd have one, so you have one, which represents that it's the first energy level. You have the letter S, and then you have this uh, subscript or superscript, a small one like that. And what this shows you is that this indicates this is if you're to write if you're to write out what the electronic structure is, it tells you that hydrogen is is arranged like this, so it has one electron in this first S orbital. And it'll, it'll follow these rules, the, so it's following this principle which states that electronics will occupy the lowest energy sublevel available. So the electron in hydrogen is going to be in this, it's going to be within this space here. It's not going to be somewhere up here in these higher energy levels. It'll occupy the lowest energy level first. So that's what hydrogen looks like. Okay, so and hydrogen is simple, it has one electron. So let's look at some more, let's say, more complicated ones. So if we take, for example, Let's say helium, for example. So helium is the second element on the periodic table. It has two electrons in its shell. So helium. So helium. It, and its atomic number is two. So that means it has two positive charges. So it also needs, it'll have two electrons. So where do the electrons hang out? So again, you're going to have one electron here and then you're going to have the second one here as well. So both electrons will hang out in this in this first energy level and this uh, this sub energy level of S. It'll hang out here. So again, it'll occupy these lowest levels first. Not more than two electrons can occupy an orbital at any one time. So each of these dashes or each of these orbitals can only hold two electrons. So and you so you can't have any more than two. So this is the way that they'll be arranged. And electrons tend to occupy orbitals of equal energy and um, singly when possible. And we can look at that when we start to uh, look at look at more complicated atoms. So again, if you were to look at, like let's say if we wanted to write out what the electronic configuration is for helium, it would look something like this. So you have He, then you're gonna have one. So He, so it would be one. So it represents that it's the first energy level. S represents that it's this, this shell, the S shell, and then you're going to have a superscript of two, which indicates that you have two electrons, and these two electrons are within this, this energy level here. Now, if you were to take, for example, then sodium, so what would sodium look like? So let's have a look. So sodium, where is sodium on the periodic table? It's the the 11th element on the periodic table. So it means it has 11 protons, but it'll also have 11 electrons. So sodium, so Na, so it has 11 electrons. So how, where do these electrons hang out? So again, remember the lowest energy level. So we have 11 electrons to account for. So first of all, the, this principle states that the electrons will occupy the lowest, ener en lowest 
uh, energy sublevels available, okay? So it's going to fill up like this. So two will go in here, like so. Uh, not more than two electrons can occupy any orbital at any one time. So for example, so this is full now. So we've nine electrons to distribute. So two of them are in here. So we're following this principle. We're following this principle. Only like two, only two can hang out here. And elect, so what will happen is then it will move up to the next energy level and we have, we can put two more in here, like so. So that's four. So we have four of the 11 electrons accounted for. And um, within here then we can, we can take six energy, six electrons. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So again, we have these lower energy levels filled first, and then what we will have then is we'll have one up here, one up here like so. So if we were to write out then, let's say the electronic configuration for sodium, so sodium is going to be Na, it's going to be equal to, so it's going to be one S, and the S has two electrons in it, the S orbital. Then we're going to have two, s2 so again the 1s2 so it means it's the first energy level it has this orbital the s orbital and there's two electrons in it and that's represented by the one the s and then this two up here second energy level you have an s orbital it's full it has two electrons then you have 2p and if we look in p we have two four and six six electrons and then we have 3s, which is this one here. So we have 3s, and we only have one electron within this energy level up here. Now also as well, what we can do then, when we look at the periodic table, so we can see here that, so, so we have an S block, we have a D block, and we have a P block. Now, these letters, S, D, and P, correspond to these particular orbitals. So what it means is that all of the electrons, uh, or sorry, all of the atoms or the elements that are in the S block, if you were to look at their outermost electron, it's going to be within an S, it's going to be within an S block. So if we take, for example, sodium here, so we can see here, so this is the way the arrangements are built up for sodium, and we can see the very outside, or very last electron, let's say within sodium is in an S orbital. And because it's within an S orbital like that, it means that this is why this particular element is, is within this S block. So if you were to do the same kind of arrangement for, for example, for calcium, you will find that the electron will be, the outermost electron, the outermost two electrons, for example, will be within, within an S orbital. So that's all it means. So these ones, the outermost electrons will be within the d orbital, and these ones, the outermost electrons will be within the p orbital. So to kind of just demonstrate this a little bit more, so this is the so this is the electronic configuration for sodium. We've just worked this one out, okay? And this is what it look. This is what it looks like. Actually. So this is this is sodium. Let's just move this up here, just out of the way. And what I want to do now is if we take this and we just get rid of these from here. And then if I was to take, um, let's say if we were to look at, if we look at another element within this group here. So if we take, for example, um, let's have a look. If we take, for example, potassium here. So potassium. So potassium is this guy here, and it has 19 electrons. So potassium, which is K. And let me just use a different color here. So imagine we have potassium, so K. It has 19 electrons. So let's say we'll write like this, K is going to be equal to. So what way, does the, what way do these 19 electrons that make up potassium, how are they arranged? Okay, so the first two are going to be arranged here within this first orbital. So 
if we were to write out this electronic structure for it, so it's going to be 1, S, 2. Um, if we have a look then, so this second orbital is going to contain two more electrons, so 1, 2. So it's going to be 2, S, 2. You're going to have 6 in here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's going to be 2P6. Like so. Um, so how many is that? So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we've 10 electrons accounted for, we've 9 more to go. So we're going to have, so let's say another, so we're going to have another 2 in here. So that's going to be, and we need to just make some space over here. So you're going to have so six in here, and then you're going to have two more in here. So that's going to be three s two, and then you're going to have six in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and this will be represented as three p six, and then this last one then is going to be here. It's going to be in the, the fourth energy level in the s, the first s orbital. So it's going to be 4s1. Now what you'll notice is that, so both, if you take sodium and potassium, so sodium and potassium, for example, are group 1 elements. They're all in this s block. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that their outermost electron is going to be in an s orbital. And we can see here, in both cases, we have both of these, so you, it's represented here, for example, you have, so you have, let me just bring this, so you can see, for example, uh, potassium here, it has So this is its outermost energy level, which is an S orbital, and it has it has its, its one electron here. And if you take, for example, sodium, again, its outer electron is in the third energy level, but and that electron is contained within an S orbital, just like like here. So therefore, these two elements are on these two elements are on the um, S block, and that's why they're there on the S block. And this is the arrangement of the electrons. So again, this is just, you know, it's just a, an introduction then into what is known as uh, electronic configuration of atoms. So we see here with these two elements, sodium and potassium. So potassium, for example, this is the way the electrons are arranged, the configuration of the electrons. This is the way they kind of fill out from the nucleus. Um, and we talked about energy sublevels. So these sublevels are these, um, these individual groups here as well. And then we have the electrons fill these energy levels following certain rules, and these are the three rules that they follow. Um, and again, we'll come back and we'll have a look and we'll go through some more examples of these. Um, so you have S block elements, that just means that the outermost, if you were to arrange or do this arrangement for all of the electrons, let's say within within this group, what you'll find is that all of the outermost electrons will be within an S orbital. And likewise, the D block groups, their outermost electrons will be in some of these D orbitals, for example. And then the same with P block elements, they will have <coughs> electrons that are within, the, within these P orbitals. And remember, these orbitals have individual shapes associated with them. S, S um, energy levels or sublevels, their orbitals, they have shaped like this, the P's are shaped like this, and the D's are shaped like this. And these are the way to think about these are just regions in space where the electrons can hang out. So again, we'll continue on and we look at some more examples of that, but then this is just a quick introduction just to kind of introduce this idea of energy levels and sublevels and the arrangement of electrons 
outside of the app. So thank you for listening.